Recorded live from their studio in Los Angeles, California, it's Brett and Alex in the Super Beard Show! This week, the news, Super Ship of Theseus Bros, and, as always, Patreon presents Fan Q&A. The date is July 8th, 2022. Support this podcast at patreon.com slash superbeardbros. My name is Ted Coonrot. Enjoy the show! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Super Beard Show, the sixth ever episode. We are here. I'm Alex. That's Brett. Ted's in the Hello. back. Megan is also in the room, but she will not be <laughs> barely referenced or heard. She's here to observe like an alien or Uatu the Watcher. You can always tell the Milford lady. <laughs> yeah. Uh, today's episode is called Wet and Mild, thanks to Gentry. A great name for anything that you're about to get on with. Mm. Uh, Gentry's the name of the person that gave us Wet and Mild. Yeah. I like wet and mild. Wet and mild? I like, not in general. I like the title. Oh, it makes me feel like I dropped my stogie in the water. Mm, like you could smoke it, but if it you did. It was a black and mild. Now it's a now it's a wet and mild. If I ever saw you smoking a black and mild. Just like raw dog in a black and mild. Like I be- would I would immediately. I'd be like, who's the black man that you're dating? Like? <laughs> Is who's, it me? Who's the 65-year-old black father that has yeah. adopted you? Uh, yeah, what happened? Here's the deal with black and milds. Let me be real. And I know that at one point in time, I guess people actually just bought them and smoked them. But they still do. Yeah, but they do. The you know the you know the little flowers at the gas station that are actually crack pipes? Oh. No. Those ones that are up there next to the little uh marzipan coins. No, sorry. Never smoked crack. Yeah, well. Uh the the black and mild to me is like Low key, it's like a, it's a blunt. Like, yeah. Like people buy them to like cut them out and put weed inside. A lot of the time. But there's a black person. I'm sure. Who hangs around other black people sometimes. Black people still smoke black and mild. I just can't conceive of doing it. I just don't have enough melanin. I guess. Not for you. I guess. What do you do? You, you smoke like a regular cigar. You just, you just, you don't inhale. You just puff on that sweet, sweet black and mild flavor. Yeah. What if it's like a? What about a Swisher Sweet? Does anybody actually smoke a Swisher oh, Sweet? I don't know about that. I don't know. Like a grape Swisher Sweet? Would you ever smoke that? Me? Who are you talking to? Come on. I'm just talking to anyone on Earth. Mm. Would you smoke? Is that a- question of the day? Do we have a question of the day? That's <laughs> not, well, we actually do have an official I do, question. Yeah, we do have a question of the day. I might make that because I'm asking it today. That might be my. Well, we'll see. I'm gonna hold that in my pocket. My news uh, today. Welcome to the news. My news today is that one time at a gas station, a 12-year-old girl asked me to go buy her grape swisher sweet, and I did not do it. How long were you in Florida? <laughs> I was in Torrance, California. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, and I was driving. I was at the gas station on Western and uh, PCH or whatever that is, Western and Lamita. And uh, yeah, she came up and she was like, can you give me a grape swisher sweet? And I was like, no. I was like, go home. Go to go. Shouldn't you be in school, little girl? That's like 80% of Dave Chappelle bit. Yeah, that was uh that was when I was like 23 and I felt like I was like 83. I've never been angry at a child for their choices. I mean I gotta assume that they sent out their kid to get the most swisher sweet. But if you do that, I was that kid, right? I was the kid going out to get the swisher sweet. Going out to get like my my dad, well, like I'd be riding with him in the passenger yeah. seat. And and uh, he'd be pumping the gas and he'd give me ten dollars. He'd be like, ask him for a, uh, bo- uh, some new ports in the box. <laughs> and it was always bad because like. Dude, I'm like how I did this like multiple times per year, right? Yeah. If I'm hanging out with my dad for that day. It's going to happen. Maybe twice that day. I go inside there and the dudes would be like. I'd be like, can I get a pack of new ports in the box, please? And they look at me. I'm like, I'm like fucking 12. Right. right? And they're looking at me and they're like, uh, can I see some ID? Right. And I'm they like, just make the call that like, they have to. Yeah. I, have yeah, to ask, I get it. Right? Of course they do. Yeah. And I'm like, it's for my dad. And then I point out and then my dad gives them the old. Yeah. The I old, just didn't want to get out of the car. Hello. Right. Like he can't hear them because he's like 20 feet away pumping gas, but he like waves at them. Trust me. This is bonding. And then they give it to me. Like. I, it's crazy to me. It's it's. I'm not saying my dad did anything wrong. 
I'm not saying that the guy. That's not the, necessarily that bad. It's it, not. I'm not saying the guy behind the counter did anything wrong, but I'll tell you this much: they didn't always ask for the ID. I know, it's real. I even today, like I mean, I don't know. Have you ever bought uh, alcohol for someone who shouldn't have it? No, never, never at like a liquor store. Like yo yo. <laughs> feel like you're about to be like all right let me get this foundational thing before i pop off on my point and, and you're like just waiting for me to say yes to that like of course you'd be like great moving on no. but i said no and you're like oh no no no. <laughs> <laughs> no i just mean like i just mean like okay like for example here's an example of, of a time when i have bought alcohol for somebody who's underage it's somebody who's my friend who's 19 you know what i mean i've never had yeah i've never done that like i understand what you're saying i get what you're saying i've never done that I feel like if the system was a kid comes up to me in the parking lot of 7-Eleven, they're like, yo, I'm like 20 years old. I want to get some beer. I'm going to just go in there and you wave. Right. Like, would you be more willing to g- give the wave? It's 2022, bitch. Like, dude, everything, <laughs> everything is recorded. Though. It's 2022, bitch. No way, bro. Like, if this, if this were like, you know, days and confused. Sweet, you're worried you're going to go down for it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Also, how old is this kid, roughly? Like, what does he look like? The kid that I have bought alcohol for was like. In this hypothetical, like, how old is this kid? I'm saying he's somebody who who looks like he could take a beer. 19, 20 years old. Somebody who's like not a child trying to buy. So here's the thing. The reason that makes me nervous is because we've all seen kids, dude or dudette, Uh? who you're like, how old are you? And they're like, I'm 14. Yeah. Like, fuck. Yeah, you large ass man. Get a I job. know. I know. I was at Amanda's uh, family home recently and met her like nephew. He's 11 years old. Uh, His dad is Jamaican. I don't know if that like matters, but he does, is. He is fucking funny. Dude, but go on. He is six yeah. one or yeah. some shit like that. And I'm like, looks like you could palm a basketball. Yeah, I was like, I was like, he was like, how old am I? And I was like, I know you're 11. And he was, and then I was like, how old do I, you think I am? And he was like, 41. And I was like, like, fuck you. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. You got like, me. What was that? And you're like, nothing, sir. <laughs> no. Nothing. Buy me some beer. And I'm like, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, tuck me in. Give me night, night, nap, nap. <laughs> Turn on my Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about it. It's, it's, Nar- it's, Nar- it's Naruto. Shut up. <laughs> hey, friends. Alex here. Just wanted to let you know that at this point in the show, we had a microphone issue where Brett's microphone was unplugged mysteriously and uh, he wasn't able to be heard for the next few minutes. So I'm just going to catch you up on what we talked about. His portion of the news is that he brought a concept called Ziffian curves. And the point of a Ziffian curve is that you take if you take all of the words in any language across the world and you order them in order of usage from most to least or whatever, the first the, the difference between the first word and the second most used word is going to be half as much. And then it's going to be for the third word, one third. And for the next one, one fourth as much all the way down. Uh, and that's the curve. I believe I got that right. Forgive me if I didn't. But the conversation was just sort of about us talking about that and how crazy it is that that is like pervasive across the entire world. So I hope that helps. Please enjoy the rest of the show. I don't think it happens again. See you later. Well, I think I feel like for it to work across mm-hmm. all cultures. Yeah. That it has to be monkey brain stuff. I feel like mm-hmm. it might be something that in some form is also present in other animals. If it's like or in other primates, like it seems so impossible that something like that could be so like, how does 80, 20 relate to that? The concept of snowballing, the concept of easily usable and understanding things, the the, the concept of ubiquitous things, just getting more ubiquitous. 20% of the words are 80% 80%, of the used 80% of the time. I see. <sighs> that is so weird. Like I'm thinking about like a book by like Thomas Pinchon. Who's mm-hmm. like, like trying to be wordy, trying to be, uh, intertextual all these like crazy deep you know nuts written sentences and stuff Mm. it's hard for me to believe that that would conform to the ziff i I, like i think i think this is worth looking up sometime like maybe there's a way to upload uh ebooks yeah maybe to like a a counter it has to be like the inception of language right like 
Like it has to be how our language. It's not is just built. language though. Like I could probably look up more examples of. It's not just language. It, so wait. So what is a Ziffian curve? That has nothing to do with language. Like did did it get invent? Like did it get discovered through language? I don't know. Okay. Okay. Let me see. So I feel like now. Oh. Is, oh yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Ted. Oh, sorry. I was just gonna say now seems like the most prescient time to describe Benford's law as well because it's so similar. What is that? So Benford's law. I, I just saw an episode of, of it like a year or so back. What? Found out that the amount of numbers that start with one Ooh. happened 30% of the time. And it goes down from there. What do you mean numbers that happen? What does that mean? So like naturally occurring numbers? Yeah. So if I like took all the numbers from your taxes. Okay. I see what you're saying. 30% Numbers that of appear them. in documentation, you mean? And everywhere documentation though no even like measurements of the universe documentation okay yeah because someone has to like document that in order to like notice it and take like it down. there's there's a part of it that has to do with humans right like humans communicating those numbers to each other right like we made the numbers but you could like even measure in like number of horses or something like that like what? you can change the measurement to whatever you want Maybe that has to do with Ziffian curves. Maybe that has to do with like, uh, maybe that has to do with the way that things naturally occur. Like if things are going to occur in a group, it's either going to be like a huge number where it's going to be like a one in front of it. But I don't know. Actually, that makes no sense because it could just have a two. It could be like 200,000. You know like, I mean? Or like what if our measurement system was half yeah i don't know yeah like what uh, if that's what if a foot was six inches you said that's called benford's law yeah how do you spell that benford uh b-e-n-f-o-r-d what did you watch an episode of oh gosh it was a netflix series a while ago oh okay so it was like a tv show but the tv show is not called benford's law no this is called benford's law that's fascinating it's really interesting to me but to give you an example of something that has nothing to do with language and that that follows supposedly, the Ziffian curve, supposedly in Ziffian is uh, supposedly website traffic, like like the number one most visited site, the number oh. two most visited site gets visited about half as often. So is it so the Ziffian curve just describes this phenomenon as a shape? This yeah describes the phenomenon of things being ordered like when they're ordered in terms of 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 you know uh, uh frequency of occurrence yeah the ratio between them is about half a third so he's a not third. a linguist he's like a statistician maybe okay you okay. feel me yeah that is fucking what <sighs> but now that mm. messes up my whole shit because before when we were talking about language i'm like this has to do with our brain but now i'm like this maybe it still does have to do with our brain but, yeah, but yeah. i don't think it has to do with language brain creation of language i don't think so specifically like it that's what i mean like earlier i was like it's like fibonacci and then i thought maybe it's not like fibonacci but now i think maybe it is like fibonacci i think it yeah i think it just has to do with the phenomenon of people to go the path of least resistance is there a ziffian curve in the fibonacci shape i'd be interested to know i, I feel like that wouldn't be ziffian at that point well though. like you know this part that goes like this yeah like I feel like, uh, sorry, like the long swooping, yeah, big swoop before big. the spiral, like the out outer part. Mm -hmm. I wonder if there's some part of that angle that is Ziffian mm -hmm. in its in its curvature. Oh, I would be I would be interested in that because that seems so. Like now I'm getting to the point that it's like simulation stuff. <laughs> it's not real anymore. Is that what you're saying? I've been playing Cyberpunk 2077. I see. Now I understand why you feel the way you feel. It's just real. It's just it's 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 really realistic. It 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 really feels like a place a lot of the time. I'm struck by how little I feel like it's a game sometimes. You like are I, immersed. Yeah, I was immersed, but like more than immersed, I was actively like less less like I'm in it and more like I'm in my own brain, just thinking to myself, like so much stuff is happening right now that feels like natural that I can't, it's hard for me to think about it as a computer program anymore. Mm. Like there's like mm. paper flying through the street. There's like light. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The down. Fid uh, fid fidelity and verisimilitude. People have like little details that really blur the edge between reality and fantasy. Yeah. And it just, it's, it's, it's a PS five mm -hmm. and it's, it's not a complex machine compared to like, 
I don't know, the fucking computer that runs, you know, some NASA shit or whatever, right? Okay. So the difference in power between the two computers, like if you scale that up, like in terms of, you know, output, I think it would be a lot closer than we realize to create reality that's indistinguishable from reality. Yeah, maybe. And then, I mean, I don't know. It, the, 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 the simulation thing. You want to talk about that now? No, no. It's just it, 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 like something like a Ziffian curve, something like that, or like the, the what was it? <laughs> Bender's number? What was it called? <laughs> Yeah, Bender's, Bender's number. number. Bender's number is sixty nine. Oh wow, it was terrifying. Yeah, he almost got Benford's it. Was that was almost got it. It was like a like a primordial ooze of Bender Ooh. memory. That, and Graham. Ooh, that was terrifying. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, but like, you know what I mean? Like, it feels a little bit too impossible. Like, it seems here's the thing. Fibonacci alone here's feels impossible. I, I, <laughs> yes, it's true. We could be living in a simulation. There's no way to disprove that. But I feel the same way about that as I do about like a god or like Supreme Descartes. Being. Like there's no just just because we see stuff that seems ordered doesn't necessarily mean that there is some intelligence somewhere as we've proven again and again. How, but it, how have we proven it or have we been in a computer game this whole time? No, no, no. We haven't. Pro- like we've proven what we have proven is that it does not prove the existence. You're know saying like what I'm saying is like just like we've. uh just like uh, uh, the, the revolution, the, the orbit of planets around the sun seems pretty ordered. But and the fact that like we live in this, uh, you know, hospitable zone doesn't prove that, you know, a God put us here. Definitely not. Right. Just the same way that, you know, Ziffian stuff and Bender's number don't <laughs> prove that we live in a simulation. <laughs> like things that seem ordered aren't necessarily ordered i know but what i'm saying is if we've been in a simulation the whole time and we're not real yeah we haven't proved anything other than what is in relation to the laws of physics yeah quote once again you're right i'm not saying we've proven that we're not in a simulation i'm not saying that yeah i'm saying that just because things seem ordered doesn't mean like doesn't doesn't necessarily suggest intelligence but we don't i'm saying if it is a simulation, we don't know for sure that things that are ordered actually happen the way that they do in our simulation. Say that again. What? Like, say, if, no, say the sentence again. If we are in a simulation, mm. things that happen that seem ordered yeah. may not actually occur that way in real, in real life. life. True. But just if we're in a simulation, there may be no such thing as the sun. You know what I mean? Like, well, that's what it is. Yeah. True. Yeah unlikely that this is just like the most incredible like narrative i doubt that the simulation that we are in was created to like like world build you know what i mean i feel like that's probably not the the point of it if it is a simulation but maybe it is maybe we're just in a playstation 9 right now remember that bro i think we're getting really off the rails i don't know (laughs) i'm just saying stuff like the the ziffian curve yeah stuff like bender's number yeah it really like it takes me straight to there. And I don't think it's that big of a leap. That's all I'm saying. I hear what you're saying. I understand your logic. I follow it. Yeah. But when you say things like that, I can't help, but like think about people who, uh, see the Aurora Borealis and then go, it's gotta be gods. It's gotta be gods. Like I get like things that seem miraculous and, and ordered, it's very easy to go like there has to be something behind it that's like intelligent. I'm just not convinced. Uh, like you, you, it could be true, but I think that there are many like like the like the um, like the examples I gave when we were talking about the Ziffian phenomenon. I think yeah. that there are other more plausible explanations for those kinds of things. But what Why? I told you, I told you, path of least resistance, snowball effect, eighty twenty. You know what I mean? But 8020 seems impossible too. Like, but it happens all the time. I, I know, but that's what I that's what exactly what freaks me out. Is there so many things? You know what like else that? seems impossible? Life coming together. Life occurring. Seems astronomically impossible. Only has to happen once. Say again? Only has to happen once to get the whole ball rolling, though. But across like, but it seems miraculous, right? And yet it's here. You yeah, know? yeah, it's true. But this is like, I don't know. 
I used to think that was crazy or that it didn't matter, which it kind of doesn't matter. I'll agree with both those things. Yeah, yeah. But like, it's not just like a Descartes style mm -hmm. question about like, you mm -hmm. don't know what reality is. It's like, see, that's where I think it is, but go on. I mean, it is that from one angle, of course, Okay, of okay, course, okay. but from another angle, it's like, are we in a fucking actual, are we in a PC somewhere in God, in God's apartment? Right. In when he's just like a college kid trying to play an MMO and one right, of these right. guys is God who's out here. I think you should just said it best yourself. Either A, it's stupid. That's stupid. Or B, who cares? Right. I, yeah, but you just kind of sound like Cypher now. You know what I mean? No, no, no. Cypher knew, nigga. Like, that's that's what I'm saying. But he we knew. could know. We could find no, out. There is no we could know. We don't know. But we could. What? Like, it's now a scientific pursuit to see if we are in a simulation. B by all means. But science, is, there's a difference between scientific pursuit and saying, I think this is this way because of this one piece of circumstance. It's evidence. not. It's like a bunch of actual uh, physicists that think this. Well, and, and the same people back in the day were like, here's why God exists. Yeah, but we, they don't know anything. They're just guessing. The, bro. Shh, bro. <laughs> For the people out there that claim that we're in a simulation. Like there is uh, sure they're like, like the Ziffian thing. There's quote unquote evidence that suggests we're in a simulation. All that shit can be explained away with other much more plausible stuff. I don't know. I don't know what, like what, what causes the Ziff? What causes the Fibonacci? We just sequence? talked about it for 20 what's, minutes. But what's a plausible explanation for that? We just talked about it. Path of least resistance. Yeah. It doesn't explain it. It just is like a little kernel of information that it elucidates me to the logic of how Maybe it could be Alex. Fun. I think you're hearing hoof beats and I think you're thinking zebras. I don't know. I feel like that's the point. Huh? Like, I feel like, you know, like thinking about something like a Ziff curve, Ziffian curve. Like, what else am I supposed to think about besides how did this happen? Horses. Yeah. Think about how it happens and then go, I hear hoof beats, probably horses. Do you think, what, what are the, you think the path of least resistance is like a, satisfying and you don't you need to know anything else about it okay so you hear that and go so you've stopped asking no i'm still very curious about Not this you've stopped asking i'm just saying that doesn't sound to me like a satisfactory scientific explanation of what happened just like oh uh it's easy to say words that have utility more than other words so that's why it's a perfect mathematical ratio between first second third fourth fifth, first sixth, of all seven. no one said it was perfect i mean Obviously, not you know. perfect but let's say we look at every single piece of writing in the world and it's there you know what i mean yeah like yeah that, it's that. A, it's one explanation and it seems the most plausible now across uh, yes. all languages yes if you're look by all means look this shit up look this shit up if you're skeptical like, i'm not skeptical people. i believe you i just mean like that is a mind-blowing result for yes. the randomness of human yes, language creation. Yes, yes. Just like life itself is. Yeah. Yes. A little bit too much order there for my comfort. That's all. <laughs> I understand. I feel like maybe there's I maybe there's a flaw in the idea of the Ziffian curve. You know? Like maybe we're not considering a factor that's going to always leave it this way, but... Sure. May, like there's still like, yeah, this stuff is all still being studied. Yeah. I don't think there's any... Ant, like there's no answers to these questions. There are possible explanations. Yeah. And not all possible explanations are created equal is what I'm saying. Yeah. I just don't think that the one that I'm saying is one of the crazy ones. I used to think it was, but the more that I've read about it and the more, you know, research and stuff that I've read by physicists and, you know, articles in Wired and articles in National Geographic and articles and all these like increasingly credentialed publications about this that would normally, you know, it'd be like if all of a sudden UFOs started to like, we started to be like, the president was like, it might be a UFO. We might be an alien spacecraft. We're going to have to check it out. Like it would be, it's crazy to me in that way that, that scientists who are serious and win awards from the rest of the scientists are like, this is what I think. And everybody's like, we respect until that. I read, I'm, I will have to remain super skeptical until I read their actual uh, explanations for that. Fair, you know. I mean, sure, but I'm I'm just saying I've read them, I've read a lot of them, and stuff like this is really like 
it boggles the imagination to imagine a system so, like, I mean, language. We pick up words and, and like, languages are created all the time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You think that this Ziphian curve is, like, in, like, every language on Earth? Supposedly, yeah. That is wild to me. It is wild. It's wild Just like so many other phenomenon that we thought had intelligence behind it. But actually, it's like, oh, no, actually, it turns out it's this thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, that's the news. What do you got for me today, Brent? Uh, you want to talk about something else? Oh, we're done with the news. I, you know, the show does have a structure. We have done. We have followed the same structure six episodes in a row. Okay. Well, yeah. Let's talk about something else. You th- Have you heard of the ship of Theseus? Uh, yeah. Ted, have you heard of the ship of Theseus? Yes, I have. Oh, you know about this. Yep. We watched right, so WandaVision, Brett. It was in there. Oh, I didn't know that. It's in the popular consciousness now. Ugh. They, uh, but you know, honestly, it was actually like a good, it was actually, they used it well. Okay. Well, for those of you who don't know, the ship of Theseus is a thought experiment for back in the Greek days. Uh, Plato for sure used to play with this as well as someone else, I think. It's I'm not defi- sure. Yeah, it's definitely like. This is some old shit. That yeah, classic thought about. experiment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's a good one. It's been around for so long because it's a damn good one, right? Mm-hmm. And basically, it comes down to this. Uh, if y'all, this is for those who don't know, obviously. Mm-hmm. If you have a ship on a harbor, it is docked at the harbor, right? Yep. It's made out of wood. It's a classic old ship, right? Theseus owns the ship. Let's say that like one part of the ship uh, gets a little old or rotted or breaks. Let's say it's the... um. The steering wheel, mm. right? Let's say the steering the wheel breaks. Yeah, the helm. <laughs> Whatever. I don't care. I'm some not some fucking sailor out there is already texting. Let him. Let him text us. Actually, don't don't text me about that. Ever. My phone number is one two three. <laughs> That's uh, it. Three starts numbers. with a one. <laughs> it's Bing Juice and do it again. It's Ben no, Juice. No, no, no. <laughs> oh God, I hate it. I Somebody, hate it's like, it. there's like a there's like a like a like a dimensional like like. Like veil and Bender's trying to get through, yeah. but there's he, something painful about yeah, that. There's something happening. It's like being born. It's it's painful. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Uh, yeah, so like you have this ship. Let's say that the helm breaks, and let's say you get rid of that helm, you put it to the side. Mm-hmm. You bring on an identical helm, right? Mm-hmm. You still got the same ship, obviously. It's just got a new helm. But let's say you do that for another piece. Let's say it's the mast. And then let's say it's like part of the sighting. And then say it's part of the hold. And then the what's it called? The, the maiden head, right? Let's say that breaks down. You got to oh, get a new yeah. one, right? Okay. I think that, that is what that's called. I think called, you're right. right. Yeah. Let's say you do that. Actually, that can't be right, right? Doesn't that mean like. I, yeah, it does mean Virginia, but I don't know, man. You know how yeah, they work. You know, I don't know. You know what I'm saying, right? Like, let's say you do this for like the whole ship. Let's say that gradually over time, this docked ship gets old and piece by piece, you're replacing it. So it's still the exact same ship. It looks the same, but because you're still holding on to these pieces on the side, uh, uh, you have like all the old p- parts over there and the new ship is there too. So the question is, is that the same ship? The question, well, you know, ladies and gents, we're around thinking and asking about the ship of Theseus is, is this ship with all new parts still the same ship? I guess that's what I'm asking the two of you. Is it the same ship? Right. You know, I've never actually like yeah. engaged with this problem deeper than surface level being like, oh yeah, I get it. Sure. Because a lot of the time when I've heard it these days, yeah, it comes from like biology. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like and cell replacement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like how people are like, well, obviously you're not the same cells that you were when you were a baby. So Correct. how are you? You. Correct. I think more than trying to come to some sort of like truth about this. Mm. Like really what it is, right? It's like, we're talking about like naming shit. Right. Yeah. And I think like if it barks like a dog, if it scratches like a dog and if it pees like a dog, it's a dog. Like, like we need it to be the ship. (laughs) We're using it. We're calling it that to use it. Like to you're talking about pragmatism and practicality. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. And I'm like, the reason that I refer to that ship uh, uh, as the same ship is because it is the same ship for all intents and purposes. Okay. That makes sense to everybody, I think. 
I, but, I but, hope so. But beyond all intents and purposes, if we were to get into the realms of technicality, if we were to get into the realms of definition and actuality and like law, right? Like if you had to codify something like this, mm-hmm. is this the same ship? I think if we were in a lawsuit where this guy's like, I own this ship 50% with this other guy. Right. And he's just trying to take pieces of the ship and throw it away. Right, right, right. My property. Right. And I think I'm entitled to half that trash because that's still the ship. Hmm. Right. Again, if I was the judge, I would be like, well, okay. In this case, yeah. In the case of this, we can call that the ship mm, because mm. anything in the court of law, they have to like define it. That's, and that's exactly what I'm trying to do here. Like in the court yeah, for, for that case. Yes. And I want to try to do that here. Like I want to say, obviously what we decide here is not going to like automatically be ratified and then everyone will have the opinion that we have when this podcast is over. But just for funsies, I'm trying to figure like if we had to define, is this the same ship or not? But to what end? That's the point. Like, is this the same ship? Like, is it going to get me to fucking New York City? Uh, yeah. Is it the same ship? Like, is is this ship over there, the the pieces of the ship? Is that going to get me to New York City? No. So that's not the ship. You know what I mean? Like, d- what if it was? What if you took all those pieces? And built another ship? Yeah, the same. Like, you just re- so you had two, but they looked identical, basically. You just did it for fun. Like, you just. Yeah. Yeah. I In that case, I would be like, which one? You know what I mean? But like, is the one with all new parts, is it the same ship that it was before? Is it like, is that the same ship? Like, if you're asking me 100%, what do I think? Yeah. I think, yeah, it is. Okay. Because of the fact that we're calling it a ship. Mm. Like, what I was talking about with the court case isn't like, mm. the judge decided, so we need to decide. Mm. My, my point mm. is more like... Mm. In order for them to have something to talk about, mm-hmm. they have to define what it is in that moment for that specific yeah, reason yeah, yeah. in that court proceeding. I don't know what to call it. Trial? Trial, yeah. Like, whatever it is. Anything. Not just trials. Anything in the court. They have to, like, define what it is. Correct. So, in that case, it is. But if I wasn't the judge and I was watching it at home and this, I saw this guy like, I own half the trash or whatever, you know. I would be like, Psh, that's not the ship. Just let mm. me throw that shit away. Mm. And in my mind, I'm just as right as the judge is. Mm. It's just that in the in the court of law, uh, you know, that's up to him. Like the, yeah. in the, in Wandavision, uh, it's about vision. It's about that there's another vision, and it's it's a reconstructed vision that's talking to a. Vision, a version of vision. I hate that. Mm. That is a creation of Wanda's whole mm-hmm. whole mm-hmm. cloth. Sure. Uh, and he's like, I'm the vision. And he's like, I'm the vision. And they're like talking about the ship of Theseus. And it's funny because it's like a superhero fight, but it's just like a vision style one where they're just like, hmm, perhaps this. Oh, yes. Very good. And then they like, that's the end of the fight is they just like talk out the ship of Theseus and decide that they're okay. both. All right. Fine. Um, but that's, that you know it worked for them in that moment to define it that way i think like what the ship of theseus is asking us to do as beings reasoning beings is to accept a uh what's the word that i want to say like accept a uh fluid existence i Rel- guess relative like like the preconception you have in your mind that you use to like get through life that you are like a single thing that right. is never changing right. and that you're the constant right. and that other things are constants like this can of coke is like right. the can of coke right? Right, right like those are things that aren't true mm-hmm. right technically yeah yeah like tech like like scientifically mm-hmm. actually not true right? Right, like right really what a human is is a living creature mm-hmm. whose consciousness is sort of like its brain is tricking itself into a feeling of continuous thought. Yeah. When in reality, it's just a living piece of flesh that is. It's an organism. Yeah. That's just replacing itself with new cells as it gets older until it dies. Okay. Right. All right. So if you're willing to accept the fact that we live in this world of like transient things, 
Mm-hmm. Or is that the word? Transient? Like things that are always changing and in motion. Dynamic. Yeah. Like if we're in that world, the ship of Theseus should be like second nature to us as humans. But I think that what it highlights mm-hmm. is the sort of human mm-hmm. desire mm-hmm. to uh, mm-hmm. define things. Like yeah. an animal wouldn't care. The animal would just go stand on the ship. Like yeah. if you said, go over there, go, yeah. go on the ship. The animal wouldn't be like, what do you mean ship? Yeah. It would yeah. just go where you tell it to go. And to me, that's more accurate. Like the ship is really just a bunch of wood that we've decided is the ship right now. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Like if I'm talking about um, the cells in your arm from when you were 10 years old, right. for example. Right. They're gone. They're gone, but they're not gone. They're somewhere. Like there's something. They're not a, they're not connected to me. Yeah. But if I was like, uh, let me hold your dust. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You'd be like, what do you mean? And I'd be like, well, eventually your hand is going to turn into a bunch of dust. Mm-hmm. That's just going to be like in the corner of some room and on an airplane flying to Seoul, Korea. And also some of it's in the ocean and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Like to me, that is more it's crazy. accurate. It's crazy. It's, it's, it's like mm-hmm. unhelpful. Right, right. But it's, but it's more accurate to what we're talking about. You true, know what I mean? True. Uh, and so like, I don't know. Maybe maybe we're going back to Ziffy and Curves. Maybe we're going back to. Just, I want to go back to Ziffy. But I mean, maybe we are. Like maybe <laughs> we're maybe we're just going back to something of like. It's interesting to think about it, and it highlights something about the world. But maybe it's just a question of path of least resistance again. That we just need to be able to talk about the things in front of us, and so we refer to them. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's why language exists for sure. But I, but I mean, no. Also, I just mean like the ship of Theseus. Like maybe the reason that the ship is still called the ship is just because we need it to be the ship because you know what the fuck I was talking about. The imaginary person who's asking me if it's a ship, like in the, in the real situation where I'm looking at a ship in ancient Greece or wherever, where I'm standing and somebody's like, ah, oh, but which ship is which is this the ship or is this still the ship? I'm like, stop being dumb. Let me get on the ship. I have to go. Yeah, Obviously. Yeah. This is obviously a thought experiment. Yeah. Right. So this is not meant to actually identify what is a ship and what is not. Right. But that's what I'm saying. Like, is the ship of Theseus, what do you think? What is your opinion on the ship of Theseus? I think that. I think that. No, no, no. My question was, is it the same ship? Yeah. Is it the same ship? In the case of, am I going to sail on it? Yeah. If I need it to be the same ship? Yeah. If, it, if, I'm, if I'm talking about, <laughs> do I own this? It's different. It's a different, we're defining it differently. Yeah. I'm, yeah I'm, okay. Look, let me ask Ted. Ted, what about you? Is it the same ship? I'm going to go with, it is the same ship. But mm-hmm. if it were a human body being re- replaced by robot parts, whoa, the final would not be the same per- the same thing. Like if you're making so, new, if you're making changes as you go. Yeah. So so let's say you Ted, you lost a, a leg, and you got a prosthetic robot leg, you'd still be the same Ted so far, correct? Yeah. And if this happened for all your limbs, you'd still be the same Ted. Yeah. Until you got turned And if you were Terminator? just like RoboCop and you just had like Ted head, you would still be Ted? Yeah. But if you okay. got rid of your face? No, no brain. T- brain. Brain. So for you, the essence of personhood lies in the brain? Yes. That makes sense. I suppose. I could see how you got there. So let me ask you this. <sighs> Mm-hmm. Let's say we were they were able to like dupe your consciousness, like uh like copy it completely, all your memories and shit, into a digital brain. And, and then they were to clone let's say they were to do both, right? Let's mm-hmm. say let's say we were far out in the future, right? Let's say we could first of all clone your body straight up, right? Okay. Brand new Ted, but he's just got no brain inside. Then Let's say they were able to take your brain waves and just make a straight up copy of it, your consciousness. But instead of putting that into Ted brain, they put that into Ted, uh, like, Ted like, PC. A, like a robot brain yeah. and then put robot brain into clone Ted and then activated him. So my question then is, is that like, is Two that Ted's? Ted? Is that Ted? I still believe no. Why? 
Because no meat brain? Yes. Okay. Let's say you're all you, right? Let's yeah. say there's no cloning involved. Let's just say your body's fine, but you have like a brain tumor or something, right? But mm. we have this technology to straight up clone, like make fake mechanical mechano brains, right? Mm. So let's say your body's fine and then they and then cut out bad brain, put in new perfect mechano brain with all your thoughts, and you wake up and it feels like you've only lost like it feels like for you it's it was fucking instant and you're the exact same, you know, to you. Uh are you same Ted or no? Hmm. A portion of my brain? No, the whole brain has been replaced. You now have like a fucking computer in your brain cavity, in your skull, but it's got all your experiences and memories. Like, like you, there's no perceived change to you. Like if they didn't tell you what happened, you would have never known. I but think we're getting a little bogged down though, because I no, we're not. No. no, no, no. This is a thought experiment. I like, I just, I'm curious about his shit. I'm like, he's, he's following a line of logic and I'm trying to see where it is. I would say no. So you are not the same because there's no meat. There's no meat part moved to the brain. Correct. The original brain meat part is gone. Okay. Let me ask you this same exact scenario, but you still got bad brain, but they're able to cut out part of the bad brain. They cut that out and replace that. Just that part with robot. Are you still same Ted? <sighs> yes. Oh! Oh, let okay. Me, let me ask you a question, though, Ted. <laughs> let me ask you a question, though, Ted. Does this yeah. have everything to do with continuity of consciousness? Does this have everything to do with continuity of consciousness? Do you know what I'm talking about with continuity of consciousness? No. So, like, let's, and this is like another, this is another one of these things. This is similar to the ship of Theseus, but there, it, the reason I was saying it gets bogged down is because now we're bringing in like life, our own life to it, which kind of muddies the water, but like, it's like in Star Trek when the science of it is to beam you down onto the planet, they take every particle of your body apart and then they reform you down on the planet, right? True. Right? So you'll never know if you die or not. You don't know. There is an exact copy of you down there on the planet and it acts like you. It thinks it's you. For all intents and purposes. It's you. Yeah. But there is a question of yeah. continuity of consciousness that arises no one can be sure if is it actually you yeah right? and so i'm asking with this question about the brain that you're turning over in your brain uh <laughs> is is that part of like is that what you're wrestling with or is it really just like nope meet ted metal not ted and it's all the brain but he just said he we just got to a point where he said if there was some metal in him he would still be ted correct yeah. Like in the brain. Like we said, like if there was like 15% of your brain that was bad and they replaced that 15% with 50% machine, you'd still be Ted, right? Yeah. But I don't think you'd have 90% consciousness. What if 90%? <sighs> what if 90% of your brain was bad brain, but like the core brain and the stem and shit still good to go. You still got 10% meat brain Ted, but 90% of brain has been replaced. Are you still Ted? I, I think because the core... <laughs> All right, fuck it. What if it's not the core? What if the 10% of brain is, I don't know, some occipital lobe bullshit? What if it's like some weird parietal lobe that's like, this part's still good. You want that 50% or 10%? And you're like, yeah, leave that shit. The rest, make it a hard drive. Let's say it's that. Are you still saying Ted? I, I say no. Uh, Okay, so that was 10. All right, what about 30? Let's say 30% is there. 70%. Which parts? I don't uh Fucking the, the fucking frontal lobe. 30% frontal lobe. Yeah, you're, I'm still me. Whoa. Where does the... So, Ted, what, where's where, the number? Yeah, what is What's the, the number? What is, the what is motivating this? What's the number? <laughs> What's the number it's, where you're no longer Ted? It's more like what sections of the brain are still the original to me. Okay. Okay, so which, so which section is needed for you to still be you? <sighs> Because I don't think the memories are stored in the brain stem or anything. I think we're talking about the, the Star Trek problem. Yeah, I mean, obviously, we're all dancing around the same issue, but I want an answer from Ted. Yeah. Like, there's a line somewhere within Ted, and I'm trying to figure out where it falls. I would love to know, yeah. Yeah. So, like, what's the sticking point? Yeah, like, which what makes part? You, what makes you change your mind? Like, if you can't identify which part of the brain 
needs to remain in order for you to be you. That's fine. But then what function of the brain are you trying to preserve for well, you to be you? For instance, like if I lose the vision part of my brain or the hearing part of my brain, I'm still me. Okay. So in my head, that could be replaced by robot parts and I am still me. So you are not. So the one I just learned about you was that you are not defining yourself by your ability to see or hear. Correct. That's fair. Okay. So then my question is, what are you defining yourself by? What is the self? Remembering yesterday? Ah, because I don't even remember some shit from yesterday. You know? Well, that's the other question. What if you fucking die every night? Mm -hmm. What if you die every single night of your life? I guess by some people's definition of what life and death is, maybe we do. Like, know? what if your consciousness ends and you only just think you're that same guy from yesterday because it's like a computer turning off? Yeah, maybe. It's, once again, it depends on people's definitions of life and death. But yeah. So my question to you, Ted, is what what part of the brain needs to be like, what's the last part of the brain that needs to be there for you to still be you? I would say primarily like judgment, emotions, and memories. So oh, judgment, emotions, and memories. So I'm sure we could look it up right now and find out which parts of the brain house and regulate those things. We're not going to right now. So let's say that, right? Let's say those pieces, let's say those pieces are still in you and rest is robo brain. Yeah. You're still Ted. I'm still Ted. Okay. Let's say those pieces are in you. The rest is robo brain. Rest is robo Ted, a whole body robo Ted, except those <laughs> whole pieces body of robo brain. Ted, whole body no robo brain. Ted, <laughs> baby brain, little piece, but just little pieces of those brain left. You still same Ted. Yes. Wow. Okay. Whole body Ted, real Ted, mind erased. Are you still Ted? Mind erased. Yeah, like Professor, a, like X, a vegetable? Professor X, not a vegetable. Oh. Professor X comes and eliminates everything about you that's ever happened to you. Oh, you wake up. Like amnesia. Yeah. You wake oh, up okay. to, tomorrow and you're like, who am I? What mm. is this? You still same Ted? Are you Ted? I say no. I have to go with my, in my personal opinion, I agree with Ted. Like I would feel more like myself. If you transferred me to full on robo body, mm -hmm. I would feel more like myself than if I lost my whole, all my memories. Even if you're not guaranteed to be actually that same guy in the robot body. But you say not guaranteed and like there, in all these scenarios, there's no guarantee. I mean, like I'm talking about like, we're talking about the ship of Theseus, right? What parts of you are you willing to physically remove and replace, mm. right? Like in a, in the ship of Theseus, like cells, it's literally a different piece. Okay. Sure. You know what I mean? Like you're okay. the, the idea of ship of Theseus is that you remove and replace pieces. Yeah. At what point does it cease to be the original thing? Correct. Yeah. Correct. So, so like if, if that's true, yeah. like what are you removing? When what? Like all of you is still there. Like all the parts are still working. It's still the same memories. Threat. I define myself by my, my, my memories. Basically like, like the, I define myself as like the culmination of my memories and experiences. But do you need to have been the same person the whole time? Like what if, what if your memories and stuff are there, mm -hmm. but your continuation, like what if you went through the transporter? Mm -hmm. are you still Brett? Once again, me personally, I'm defining myself by my memories and my experiences. So if I go through the transporter and I can remember everything, then for all Rega to, regardless for of whether or not you actually are the same, like hmm. you remember being brought into the, to the transporter room and beamed down oh. and, and you now are here and you know that that happened. Yeah. But let me, let's say in this case, it really does end your consciousness. And then you're reconstituted down on the planet. Mm -hmm. You're still you, according to you. By your definition, that would not be an, an, an ending of consciousness. And if it is an ending of consciousness, then as you purported a few minutes ago. Wait, then, why wouldn't it be an ending of consciousness? Because if you break down my body via transporter and then reconstitute it on Vulcan. Yeah. So somebody could be like, that's death and rebirth, bro. And I'd be like, fair enough. But by that same logic, you can make the same you can make the same argument for like 
<sighs> being put under anesthesia for surgery or sleeping. Right. Yeah. But it's not quite the same as those because you are obliterating your whole body where there is a moment. I think, I don't know exactly the timing on this. I'm not like a star Trek expert, mm-hmm. but the way that it works, it seems like it's not instantaneous. Yeah. yeah there's, there's transport buffers and stuff. Yeah. It's true. Like they but can, my point they is can this, like, like, be like, he's almost here. Like we're talking about science fiction at this point, which is fine. Well, it has to be, it's not real, but I mean, neither let me, is let me, this. Let me finish. Yeah. We're talking about science fiction, which is fine. Yeah. Uh, the scenario that can't happen in real life yet, whatever. Right. Uh, but even with that example, I still feel like in my personal opinion, yes, I would still be me because what I'm defining myself as is like my collection of memories and experiences. So once again, like, you know, to go back to the other example, if I got robocopped, right. Mm -hmm. And they put my brain like, and if it was my entire they uploaded my brain scan into full on robo body brain and I still had all my memories. I would still, obviously I'd be having an existential crisis. Yes. Yeah. But when I got over that, I would still feel like this is deaf. Like I still feel like I am me. What about, I would, uh, what, I ab- would. what, okay. Speaking of science fiction. Yeah. What about a prestige scenario? Oh, I don't even want to talk about that. Uh, <laughs> oh, man, that's so grisly. That's like literally what we were just talking about with Robo Whole Body Ted. I know, but like what you're talking like the prestige movie is it like it's grisly. It's just like you just brought up grisly stuff. That's all. I mean, yeah, that's a brutal. I it's, mean, it's brutal. So that's a, I don't want to talk. Uh, I don't want to talk about it. I think we're out of time anyway. But like you. Yeah, that's that's fucked up shit. too. But like, are you still Hugh Jackman without? I don't want to talk about yeah, the prestige yeah, yeah, yeah. because I'm not trying to spoil it for anybody because it's amazing. And yeah, I'm not trying to. I don't do think that. I've done that yet. No, yeah. I don't think so. But the, here's the last word I'll say of the prestige because I don't want to talk about it. Yeah. Am I am, like, am I still Hugh Jackman? The question At the end is, of the trick. Are you still Hugh Jackman at the turn of the prestige? Definitely. Definitely. Yes. <sighs> okay. All right. There it is. That's <laughs> Shall big. We, That's big. Shall we move on? I wish I had that sort of clarity. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's that bit of the show. Uh, now let's jump into the part of the show that's always in the show, and that is fan Q and A. Bender's number. Bender's question box. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hate it. Bender's ask Bender. You sound yeah. You sound like a Catholic creature. Trying to breach into our world. It's like when you hear, when people like, when you're in the woods and you hear somebody calling your name, do not answer. It's not human. If I heard that in the woods, I'd be like, fuck you. Bite my shiny metal ass. I'd be like, fuck you. Like, you're clearly not scary. You're just <laughs> disturbing. You I know? would be scared if I heard that. Uh, you're starting Denver. to sound like Jennifer Coolidge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. That's bad. Okay, I can't get into this. Last time on the episode, uh, we asked, what's something that you care a a lot about that you don't really broadcast publicly? Was that your question? Yeah. Okay. You said uh, storytelling and some other things like that. Yeah, I think I did. Yeah, and I said uh, a lot of different things. Just like I love Disneyland as a concept. Right, right, right. I said I like cars more than people think I do. I don't like that movie. Stuff like that. Love cars. I love planes. Disney's planes. Mm. Um, so we asked, what's something that you care about a lot, care a lot about that you don't really broadcast publicly? Okay. Uh, first one comes from Anonymous. Oh, boy. You want to take this one? Okay. Anonymous says, with equal parts. No, gonna- <laughs> Every, everybody has a raspy voice. With equal parts, shame and pride. Huh. I don't tell my current friends or coworkers, but yes. It's true. I'm a brony, a.k.a. a male adult fan of My Little Pony. I got into the show Friendship is Magic while I was in college as a joke with my. It's not a joke. <laughs> For the bit. I, yeah. For the bit. Right. Yeah. Like, so I suck your dick. Yeah. But it's a gag. Yeah. It's hilarious. You're going to gag on my. No, no, no. It's, <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> yeah. It's hilarious. I got into the show Friendship is Magic while I was in college as a joke with my roommates. But the show never. <laughs> <laughs> but the joke never stopped this person writes this guy i feel like i would make now i'm the i joker. would turn this into a minute and a half sketch <laughs> of someone like turning into like a q on full-on white supremacy as, as a bit yeah for the joke right as a laugh i would do that uh this person continues and even though they didn't stay as brony as i did 
This is almost seven years ago now. I think it taught me to like things for myself and be proud of myself more. All right, good. It's nice. Yeah. Finding the joy in something that you like, even though, I mean, I'm, I, I forgot about bronies, to be honest with you. Mm, I felt I like the world did. Yeah, I don't know. I, I have no hate against this. And I feel like, I think maybe we're past the brony now. I think if there's a lesson to be learned from this, it's that don't be wary of doing things ironically. Because if you do it long enough, eventually you're just doing it. Yeah. And honestly, in this case, it sounds like you really weren't doing it that ironically. Like it started out that way, but then, you know. Maybe like the moment that you started to watch the show, you did it for a bit. But if you were to, right, right. you know, let's do And this that is like a positive example of that again. where you're like, yeah. I did this ironically, but I found out this this nice thing that I like. It turned into that. Yeah. But, you you know, you hear about people who was like, let me go ahead and research QAnon so I control these people. Flash forward six months where they're like, but it's real. And I learned like the dude from Mr. Show at the fucking January 6th insurrection. Is that real? Uh, Jay Johnston. Yeah, he was there. Oh, boy. All yeah. right. Hey, let's continue and get off that fucking uh, subject. Huh? Just mind blowing. Anyway, uh, here's another one. Uh, hi. Is it weird to say super beard bros as my answer? Who is this? Wait, who is this? Alex. Oh, OK. Got it. Sorry. <laughs> Not me. Hi. Is it? It's it's another me. It's like my baby me from myself. Oh, oh got uh, it. Hi, is it weird to say Super Beard Bros as my answer? I've been watching it since it was Super Beard Bros Deluxe with Greg. Mm -mm. And I just wanted to thank you, Alex, for teaching me how a sperm whale has sex. Mm. Sorry, Brett, for making him explain it to you. He's not going to do that today. <laughs> not today. No, no way. This is a family show. Uh, actually, it's I mean, just it's just visually funny. This makes sense to me, though, because like. This like I, I it's I'm hard pressed to even think of people who would be like. Let's all gather around and, and watch, watch Beard it Bros. together. I know it people do. Like, I know like, they do. Yeah. Beard Bros seems like reading to me. Seems like a solitary thing. Yeah, it's like a little secret. Like I feel like this is the ideal Beard Bros fan to me. Like to me, mm. I love the Someone idea. With your name. Somebody is this you? named after is this me you? who likes what I do, likes my sperm whale bit. Mm. Uh, no, but real talk, like Super Beard Bros, any sort of let's play show. There's not. We're not making this to be discussed by the 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 like critics of YouTube, like, you know what oh. I mean? Like, Oh, we're not, there's not like a larger conversation that we're having. Really? really? I don't think mm. I, you know, like, mm. <laughs> were you under the impression that we were, I don't know how conversations can be large, but like, how do I, I'm like, a large man. Like if I'm writing a poem, right. There's yeah. other things that you could talk about my poem besides like what I was saying in the poem. You could say, Oh wow. Like I was trying to like do this, this and this and this, this and this. I don't think there's a lot of like mm -hmm. shareables going on with beard bros. It's more like, a parasocial relationship that we're sort of consciously creating at this point mm. uh, where we want you to feel like you're hanging out with us. So it's almost like a sit on the couch. You guys. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's my feeling. I'm patting the couch right now. That's my, that's my feeling about it. I feel like it would be weird to be like talking to, to all your friends about how much you like beard bros all the time and like repping beard bros and showing up at stuff being like, I love the beard bros. I don't think that's wrong to do. I just think that's, mm -hmm. Like a, like a, mm. I would be surprised if that was what most people who watch beer, I feel like most mm. people watching are watching it while they're shitting or working or on the bus or. <laughs> I'm so glad shitting came first. Or like <laughs> at 2 a.m. by yourself, catching up on five hours of it, kind of not fully paying attention. Yeah, it seems solitary, like, doesn't it? Yeah, I feel like that's mm. the vibe. Yeah. That's how I watch it. Oh, that's how I watch my YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. yeah some stuff i watch like some stuff like that has like tv quality production i'll watch like with someone like if it's like a narrative based thing mm. on youtube that i got into or something like that or a podcast that's like like i listen me and kelly started listening to that wolverine podcast together there's a wolverine podcast dude it's lit oh boy right. okay. it's 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 written by benjamin percy it's like good all right yeah all right. uh it's like a it's like a narrative show it's like a tv show but it's a podcast like it's oh so it's it's fiction yeah Oh, I see. It's like made by Marvel. So it's, a it's a radio play. Yeah, but it's Got like, it. but it's on, you know, it's like a podcast. Like, yeah, it's, it's a, in it's my same app where I do a lot of private listening, a mm. lot of like stuff that I listen to only when I'm by myself in the Who car. Who voices Wolverine? Uh, Armitage, Richard Armitage. I don't know the name, but okay. Let's he's move like on. a, he's like a gruff British guy. Uh, oh yeah, it's good. It's really good. Uh, what's his name is in there? Pete from 30 Rock. Weirdly. Mm. Not what I expected, but uh, yeah. But yeah, I think Beard Bros as a quiet, solitary thing, I think that's right on. All right. Here's one from James. James says, the environment. I love technology. Cue the song. And I'm American. <laughs> so I also love big brands and guns. Damn, really? That's right. a self-aware American right there. 
I, yeah, I can't tell if this is like a little. I think it's a little ham fisted. Yeah, like I can't tell if this is literal or not. And if it is, that's fine. I'm just like, I'm always, I'm always shocked when I see a comment from someone on our stuff from someone who is like very, like clearly much more right wing than us, which is totally fine. It's all good. I'm so surprised. I'm like, like, how surprised. could you not? I'm like, I'm surprised that they just haven't left yet in a huff. <laughs> a lot of them, apparently, it's fine. According, according to the comments, we've lost a lot of subscribers from this one. Great. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but like more shout out like if you know if you got your guns like I get it my dad fucking collects guns and shit I I'm just surprised. I shot a gun it was fun I liked it it's you know I'm just surprised like let me see what James has to say yeah uh, lately I've gone from feeling like oh someone smarter than me will deal with it later too am I really going to see chocolate disappear in my lifetime mm. to oh no the planet is on fire but for some reason it's still really embarrassing me to talk about mm. since I think a lot of people my age. Will treat me weird like Chicken Little. That's that's a sad that's story. Sad. That's a sad story. <sighs> that's it's. Shout out to James for being very conscious, obviously, but like obviously also self. Like I, he's James is very self aware, which is good. Yeah, but I also feel bad for James because it must suck to feel like Chicken Little. I feel like Chicken Little, like. All the time. Right. About like, I'm sure you have things that you're chicken little about. I have things I'm chicken little about. James's chicken little thing is like probably the closest to actual chicken little. You know like I mean? literally chicken little. Yeah. A hundred percent. So I, I'm, I feel bad for you, James, man. And, and That's I hope sad. it can feel really shitty to feel that you have no recourse or avenue for self-expression. I hope that you find a place beyond this stupid little podcast to, to, Say your truth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. About how you feel about the environment. I hope you find that place, man. Yeah. And you know what else? Like, just real quick. Like, I really empathize with this feeling. I think that there is a struggle here that's larger than being American or being chicken little among your friends of like, mm -hmm. sort of, how do I describe it? Like, there's a lot of stuff that we do every day as, uh, maybe maybe we are, Amer maybe it is because we're American. People on the internet, let's say. Okay where we are posturing or, or, you know, like people like taking a picture of their house that where they're like, they look beautiful and they look like they're on vacation. And then you like pan over in the imaginary camera and there's like trash and it's like an empty Oof. apartment with no, what you're describing right now is making my stomach. turn. Yeah. No furniture and stuff like it's that. Making my stomach. But they're like, I'm doing great. And it's my happy weekend. Like mm -hmm. stuff like that. Right. Mm -hmm. But then like, you know, I go online also and you know, somebody gets, shot in the face on fucking 4th of July or whatever. And I'm like, right. you know what? I think guns are a bad idea. And I go in on somebody who has something to say to me back. Ooh. You know what I mean? Not, not in a disrespectful way, just in a way where I'm like, you said go in on. Well, I mean, just literally like take the time to like set some time aside and be like, here's actually what I think. Cause they'd be like, Oh, so, you know, something like along the lines of like, so you don't want me to get food. You want me to hunt? Like I'm a hunter. Like I feed my family with my guns and I'm like, okay. But like, Here's what I'm talking about. Nobody's trying to take your guns away. How does, you know, uh, going through a rigorous, uh, you know, check program, background check program or something like that stop you from doing that, right? Like, we're just talking about a way to stop people from shooting people in the head on 4th of July for no reason. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. Like, the pressure on me to stop talking about what I'm talking about from the person is harder than the anger at me for having my opinion. Like I often get to a place with people where I've reached the end of the, what, how far they've ever thought about this before. Mm -hmm. And they're finding it hard to logically disagree with me. So instead I have to face their like psychic Sue storm, like bubble of we're not going past this point. And I think, you know, Talk, you know, going back to what James was saying, talking about Chicken Little, I just really empathize with that feeling of reaching that point where people, you know, there's a pressure from all sides to just sort of ignore problems because you have to enjoy your life and mm. you have to like get through things. And mm. you know, I I, I I feel bad for you, James. <laughs> both. So both beer bros uh, decided uh, pity is what we're expressing. I just feel here. bad. I, I, I we're all James in a way. Mm. I am you, James. I am you, James. Shout outs to James. Uh, next one is from Moose. She says, cooking. 
Sometimes I get recipes online and cook them and I do a decent job, but I mm. never tell anyone because most of my friends are on Discord. Mm. Yesterday, I made scrambled eggs with salmon from a can. Shh. Dude, most of, most of your friends are on Discord. Post that shit, dude. Dude, yeah. Man, I, I don't know. I text. I, I like food bomb my friends all the time. Mm. Like I made shakshuka with yogurt and eggs last night with some spicy meatballs. And other than eating it, all I wanted to do was show people my beautiful thing I made. I think. Why don't you post that? I did. I mean, I don't post it on the internet. That's what I'm saying. Why don't you do that? I did for a while. I, I started to do it, but it started to depress me the way that Why? people were reacting Why? to it. Why? What would they do? Just engage with it in an impersonal way that, you know, I, I, I wouldn't expect them to engage with me in a personal way because they don't know me, but like, it just, it, 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 the way that some people respond to what I write, like, takes the enthusiasm out of it. And I'd rather just give it to somebody who's going to, respond to me the way that I expect them to because they Fair know enough. me personally. Everything you just said, I get it. hundred percent. Yeah. It's like hard for me to enjoy. I, I like doing it for the gram is like not something that I like really feel a hey man. I'm not saying you should do it for fucking internet points. I'm just, you just said like, Oh man, I would love to share. And I'm like, how come you don't? That's I do. All I, I share with my friends. I just mean like, Oh, okay, great. Yeah. I, I just don't feel that urge to do it for the gram is what I mean. Like I, yeah, it, I wouldn't, it, I wouldn't even talking about that. Great. I, I have done it in the past, but I, yeah, it depresses me. That makes sense. Yeah. Yep. But yeah, just to go along with what Moose is saying, I don't know if you've ever heard this before, Moose, but food is like a creative thing. It's like, yeah, definitely. It's art. like an expressive art. It can you know be. what I mean? Yep. Yeah. It can be. Like some people just eat oats to get through the day. Some people just take all their leftovers and put it into a Tupperware and mm. put a little heat on it. Mm. That's me. That eat it. That's you. Mm. That's me. <laughs> yeah. Ted, yeah. let me, I want to help you. Uh, but uh, <laughs> nothing, wrong with, nothing wrong with leftovers. No, nothing wrong with that. Nothing, nothing wrong with leftovers. Wrong, yeah. M mushing them all into a you, Tupperware together and just eating it. Yes, do, you better do what you got to do to survive. True, true. Do what you have to do to survive. True, but also, if you're finding it enjoyable, I don't think there's anything wrong with treating it like any other accomplishment in your life. Sure. Yeah. Uh, okay. Next one. Here's from Chubbs. Did I write this? <laughs> I think I may have written this. <laughs> I wish I could say something cool, like a good old TV show dope x-men comics but my secret love is historical european martial arts <laughs> like when historians research fighting systems in old books and stuff to see how people used to fight with swords and stuff at first it sounds cool because fights are awesome true but it's mostly just me reading and watching tournament highlights tournament highlights i mean from like current modern day practitioners of this stuff i gotta imagine that i could see somebody throwing on like a suit of armor sure and people still do fencing you yeah know? fencing is kind of tight yeah yeah so this is tight. This uh, sounds tight to me. I don't know. Yeah, this. Yeah, like, uh, but I get it because like this is definitely the first one I've heard where I'm like, yeah, I I can imagine it would be hard for a situation where this will come up naturally would occur where you'd be like, funny us talking about martial arts, self-defense systems. Like, yeah, unless you were really trying to express yourself to people, I can imagine uh, it would be hard to find a natural situation to bring this up. Yeah. I mean, I actually know somebody who's into this. Oh, yeah? Kelly's old uh, GM used to be, like, all about this. GM? Uh, yeah. Game Master? Oh. I was like, what the fuck? Sorry. DM, GM, whatever. You know, all right. her, her, old, her old Dungeons and Dragons boss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I got you. Uh, he would, like, we'd go to, like, the, uh, what's it called? The Ren Fair or whatever. All of, everything you just said about this person tracks. Yeah. We'd mm -hmm. go to the Ren Fair and he'd be like, Psh, that's not how they do that. You know, like stuff like that. And that's like, you know, that's like, it's a, you know, it's a little, a, a little obnoxious, but like, I, I always thought it was interesting. Like, cause I would always be like, what's, you know, what's wrong with it. And then he'd have like stuff to say. Well, yeah. And, 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 you know, he talked about it and I looked it up a couple times. Like, it's cool. Like, yeah, it, it's, I, it's just funny that Martial they started this. Cool. It's just funny that they started this by being like, I wish I could say something cool, like a good old TV show right. or, or dope X-Men comics. And I was like, no. Two things that are like almost universally known as like nerdy, lame things. Old TV shows? I mean, I be, okay, let, let's be X -Men honest. X-Men comics, yes. I believe that they're talking about X-Men comics, yes. Maybe it's just because we just talked about it, but I believe they're talking about Arrested Development. Uh, oh, oh, dude, don't say that. <laughs> it's like... Thinking of Arrested Development as an old TV show. That's so old. It's so old, Michael. Oh, 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 three? I yeah. Think? I was in high school for sure for all three seasons. 
I remember my freshman year of college is when it when it ended. Yeah. Wow. Exactly right. Wow. Yo, Chubbs, that shit's tight. Yeah. I don't know. I wouldn't feel bad about that. Uh, but yeah, that's today's uh, fan Q&A. But before we end the fan Q&A, we got next week's question. I know we kind of weighed in on this already, uh, but uh, this is. Yeah, Brett's, well, we can is, still yeah. give it up for them, right? Yeah. Uh, it's real simple, guys. Yeah. We just want to know, in your opinion, when does the ship of Theseus cease to be the ship of Theseus? Yeah. Right. And why? Right. Yeah, I think to distinguish this from my opinion earlier in which you were asking me, like, is it the same ship? You know what I mean? Which I think, yes. Right? Like, for all intents and purposes, yes. When does the ship of Theseus cease to be the ship of Theseus? What is the whole Ted brain slice that takes it too far (laughs) for me? I think it's just literally when it doesn't make sense to refer to it as the ship of Theseus anymore. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, I think literally, like I said, like, if we're standing in the dock and I need to get on the damn ship, I'm not going to go stand in a pile of trash. You know what I mean? I'm going to go stand on the goddamn ship of Theseus. And uh, that's the only thing that makes it the ship of Theseus in the first place is that we said it was. I think it ceases to be the ship of Theseus before the first piece is even removed. I think it ceases to be the ship of Theseus the second after we ask the question. Because of how the water, the wind changes it subtly. You know what I mean? Wow. That's me. Do you think there's any maniacs out there that are like, when 50% of the ship is gone? That's what I'm hoping for <laughs> in the answers. Yeah, I'm hoping there's people who's like, it's clearly 45% in here as well. Like, that's, yeah. I'm waiting for that. Yeah. I'm hoping. What do you think, Ted? I, th- I thought I was done answering that question. <laughs> and so you are. Yeah. All right, let's move on. Uh, that's it. That's the episode. That's, that's it. That's oh. the that's the beard. Sh- that's the super beard show today. Folks. We really hope that you guys enjoyed it. And regardless, we appreciate you checking it out. Thank yeah. you. Thank, thank you, you for thank you for listening. If you want to get involved, if you want to ask questions, if you want us to read your stuff, patreon.com slash superbeardbros. You can join the podcast plus tier on there. Uh we just appreciate you watching. Uh it's been kind of fun to do a podcast, and I feel like the effect that we intended to have by removing the gameplay has happened. I think a lot of people have been talking get into about a lot more arguments. Yeah. Well, it's a good thing. Yeah. Like arguments in the sense that we are talking about a subject and right. we have differing opinions and we hate each other and we want to kill each other. <laughs> Bender's numbers. Bender's gonna get you. Oh. <laughs> Bender, did you hear they're bringing back Futurama? Oh. They almost <laughs> didn't get John right. DiMaggio. We'll see. We'll see you later. Bye, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> the band. Bye. And snap! See you guys later. One point while we were reading the letters, Ted got up to get Brett's DoorDash order. Don't know if that's relevant.